I'll be having very interesting guests who have personal stories to tell to the world. Welcome to MND World Talk Show. Hello there, welcome to MNB World Talk Show's new episode. Today, I have very, very, very interesting and very different person in our studio. He's a Mongolist, he's a long singer, he's a horsehead fiddler player, and well, uh, he is almost better Mongolian than me. Well, this person is Mr. Steve Morell. Is a Mongolist. Well, thank you for coming here in our studio. And Sakhan, how are you doing? Sakhan, Sakhan, how are you doing? Sakhan. On my Tarhan Tafte or who? Tarhan Tafte or who? Well, your Mongolian is very good. Thank you. It has improved a lot over the years. Mm -hmm. I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> how and why were you attracted to the art mm -hmm. of filming? Uh, actually, my brother influenced me to play video game a lot. Okay. So I was kind of like a hardcore gamer before. So okay. I used to play like StarCraft, World of Warcraft, like 18-hour uh, day, this kind of lifestyle. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> that's uh, totally that's shocking. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and actually playing video game uh, and watching movies and being al always surrounded by these fantasy things and mm -hmm. all. I kind of got attracted by the motion design, by art, mm -hmm. this kind of thing. So little by little, I switched my activity on the computer from video game ah, to Photoshop okay. and something motion creative. design to ah. something that because I was too scared to go outside. Uh -huh. So I thought that, OK, if I need to work at some point, I better stay on my computer safe mm. from the world, you uh -huh, know. Uh -huh. So before I was playing video game and then little by little, I switched to make Photoshop and imagery and motion mm -hmm. design and this kind of thing. So I was like sleeping at school mm -hmm. and during the night I was working and learning and checking tutorial, trying to create stuff. And mm -hmm. so that's how I learned like uh, this major. So you said that uh, the change has happened to you. Mm -hmm. What was the reason and how? Like when was the turning point? Okay, I have to. I should try to be not so much introvert, but mm -hmm. I should try to connect with the outside world, etc. Like mm -hmm. Psychologically, how it happened? Oh, it's very, very clear. Actually, I almost died from a, almost died from a heart attack or something like that, uh, because when I was working in the cinema industry, I was working a lot, mm -hmm. like a 20 hour day or like mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of people work alone. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really paying attention to my body, to myself. So I was just working and eating pizza, sushi, cola, coffee mm -hmm. and like that all the time. And after a few years uh, of having that rhythm, my body just said, OK, now uh, mm -hmm. it's over. Mm -hmm. So I, I ended up in hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, that was quite quite freaky. Mm -hmm. um, so you almost died. Yeah, like. Like uh, I, I, I was uh, laying on the floor for like mm -hmm. 14 hours. What I remember is that after that experience, I was, I was thinking like, OK, my life cannot be just working and eating sushi with coffee all the time. I need to do something else. And all that energy, all that work uh, I was giving uh, in the company I was working back then, mm -hmm. it wasn't for me. That was for my boss. Mm -hmm. And the result, um, like the fruit fro of my work mm -hmm. wasn't coming back to me. Yes. So that was the first uh, episode that really started to uh -huh. switch mm -hmm. uh, from, okay, I'm like 
close-minded and I'm, I'm in a bubble and mm -hmm. I need to do something. Mm -hmm. And a few months after that, a guy uh, assaulted me in the street with a gun mm -hmm. to steal my stuff. Mm -hmm. So he put the gun on my head, mm -hmm. stole everything, and then he went away. So it w was it a real gun or not? I don't know. Yes, but yes. I'm so thankful for that guy because... Thankful. Okay. Uh, because <laughs> thanks to that, I really realized that life is very precious and that uh -huh. life can be like, now I'm alive, now I'm yeah, dead. It can end and in it's instant. It, it, it's, it, it can just switch like that, just like that. So after this guy made me uh, that gift, I really like started to explore other things. Uh, I quit my job and that's kind of mm -hmm. the time when the murder arrived in my life so mm -hmm. everything Tengeri is very smart <laughs> <laughs> everything was like shaped so very wow. nicely uh -huh. so that's that was the fun. big uh, big moment aha mm -hmm. moment okay uh -huh. you know my life could could have ended yeah just, just like, like that, that for uh -huh. fun <laughs> so okay yeah. well you are here we are in mongolia mm -hmm. you are in del mongolian traditional clothes how mongolia came to your life Mm -hmm. So that's the perfect transition. Okay. Uh, just after those experience, those episodes, uh -huh. uh, my best friend back then, mm -hmm. who was a music composer, so I was doing the video, he was like uh, doing the music, so okay. we were always working together. And he came one day at the office mm -hmm. with a CD, mm -hmm. and he said, man, this mm -hmm. CD gonna change your life. Okay. So I was like, okay, okay, let's hear that. Uh -huh. And uh, that was Tuva music from the Tuba. band uh -huh. from Tuva uh -huh. from the band uh, Hun Horto and Hun, Hun Horto that's Hun, like Hun a Hun. four guy okay. uh, Tuva guy like very mm -hmm. famous maybe I, I don't pronounce it well mm -hmm. I don't know um, so I, I listened to that CD and mm -hmm. inside me it just like woke up something emerged or I don't know it's like a ray of light or something so you happened. Had this ecstasy. Uh -huh. right. it's, it was like a flow of energy, of inspiration, and something like I was connecting with something with something from before. Mm -hmm. So I spent six months listening to that CD nonstop, kind of. So wow. when I was in work, I had my head, headset. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And like um, when people came to talk to me, I was like taking off the headset. It was like uh -huh. this uh -huh. music, you know, homie and so uh -huh. people were looking at me like strange. What, uh -huh. what is he uh -huh. listening to? And that's how I, I started to get involved with Mongolia, mm -hmm. checking on YouTube, other music, see some video. I saw that mm -hmm. video of Batsorik from Husuktun, ah, uh, yes. who's playing on the mountain and singing yes, Romeo. Yes. I was like, oh my God, I want to be like that guy. That's so great. And that mm -hmm. was actually the first time I saw a uh -huh. So I saw like this uh, neck, thin neck, the body, the uh -huh. horse head. I was like, oh my God, that's so sexy. I, I, the shape, wow. you know, the design of the uh -huh. instrument was like so amazing. And uh -huh. I, I totally was shocked. So it was from it and that's how it magical uh -huh. band. That's uh -huh, that's how it started, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. Tuvan music. Mm -hmm. Have you had a chance to really meet with that Tuvan band? Uh, not yet, but I... So I are you planning? I, yeah, I really would like to, to see them live someday. Definitely the Mongolian nature and the Mongolian animals uh, are deeply connected with the music. Each time I'm in the nature, I always like also to play like kind of improvisation, just to feel the spirits and the energy around. Let this energy get into me and then get out through the voice or through the instrument. So we say in, in Mongolia, and it's kind of it's, it, it means like um, giving joy and giving good vibe giving kind of like a gift to the guardian spirit of a place. So that's kind of the direction I, I want to go in my research and in my like artistic life also. Um, connect more with the nature, the energy and connect like all that with the music and ancestral music and tradition. So now 
just listening to the piece. <laughs> How did you decide to <coughs> come to Mongolia? Uh, I decided first in, time. Mm -hmm. in uh, 2014. Okay. So uh, I was playing Manur uh, for a few months mm -hmm. and I, uh, it was just burning inside me. I, I, I need to go there. Something is there for mm -hmm. me or I don't know. It was like the, the, the wish, the energy were, were pushing me to, to come actually. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really add choice I really needed to come and mm -hmm. when I started to make the, de the decision inside myself mm -hmm. things happened and I just happened to be there so <laughs> I, I met like a, the friend of a girl that was teaching me Mongolian back then like teaching me mm -hmm. the alphabet the Cyrillic mm -hmm. and she were supposed to go in Mongolia mm -hmm. and maybe be a guide for me then I met a guy on YouTube uh, also playing Mönchur that would come in Mongolia at the same time mm -hmm. so we could meet and so it was just oh, like wow. do you have uh, teachers you must have teachers yeah mm -hmm. uh, actually I learned in the language and civilization school of Choi Lu ah. um, so I've been learning now for four years there mm -hmm. so mostly tradition Mongol Bichik like the old script yes. and um, uh, how to say ethnology ethnography those mm -hmm. kind of subject and my main major is like uh, literature, literature. Oran, Oran uh -huh. so uh, I'm very pleased because they really support me and mm -hmm. they kind of like answer all my questions I'm very exhausting student because <laughs> I always, <laughs> ask always ask questions. many things <laughs> I'm very very curious mm -hmm. so they always there to support me and to try to find answer <coughs> when they don't know so um, I'm very grateful and, uh, and of course uh, I went to see many many different kind of Mongolian uh, scholar, musician, mm -hmm. uh, singer to take um, personal course. Mm -hmm. So I learned one year with one Mary mm -hmm. then I learned with another person for a few months and because I, I, I understood also very quickly that in Mongolian culture we cannot just ask from one person. We need to ask on one specific subject, we need to ask to many, many, many person, mm -hmm. then gather all those information and w then when we put all together, we mm -hmm. start to have something that is a complete bit message kind of thing, uh -huh. whole thing. Something uh -huh. like that. So mm -hmm. I like to ask to a lot of person to get sure. um, kind of free. Over overall bird's view on the on the subject. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well you are working on a, on a book mm -hmm. since two thousand sixteen. Yeah. And you are trying to do it, I heard that uh, you're trying to do it on four dif different languages. Oh, I'm not trying, I do it in four languages. <laughs> I mean, uh, in Cyrillic, of course. Mm. But it uh, hasn't been completed yet. No, it's like around mm -hmm. 60... Tell us about the project. 60, 70 percent. So oh, my, my idea is actually, uh, because I, I during the summer, sometimes I did some guide uh, work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of foreigner people Mm -hmm. really enjoy the Mongolian music, the mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. but they don't have any idea of what is it about, uh, what is the meaning of the songs and everything. Mm. So I started to, to think that to um, uh, develop and send that culture mm -hmm. abroad, um, I could start to translate songs, long mm -hmm. songs, poems, uh, epics, maktaj, uh, this kind of uh, piece. Mm -hmm. So in the first book there is like uh, around 35 piece songs mm -hmm. that I translate and that I explain. So uh -huh. it's in Mongol uh -huh. that I will write by hand mm -hmm. because Mongol Bichik need to be alive. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be like a computer uh, yes. typing. Mm -hmm. Then in Cyrillic because some Mongolian cannot read Mongol mm -hmm. Then of course in French and in English. So mm -hmm. always with like explanation. Mm -hmm. uh, so people, when they hear uh, Mongolian or mostly foreigner, then when they hear a song, 
uh, they can understand ah it's about like this uh -huh. place or mm -hmm. about this uh, feeling or this mm -hmm. thing it's not just enjoying the music but also understanding, understanding what is behind the, uh, wha uh, understand the philosophy of mm -hmm. it understand the exactly. lyrics of it so yeah. you are giving this full the packed pleasure uh -huh. with your book and the music uh -huh, exactly mm, very interesting that's the goal of of the book so i i hope to finish the first one this year mm -hmm. and once it's finished i start the second and the mm -hmm. third and so well that's great work of promotion of mongolian culture mm -hmm. yeah, very great <laughs> yeah because uh -huh. um behind mostly i i want to translate maktad and long song mm -hmm. because behind there is always very deep meaning mm -hmm. like kind of life um life lesson life uh, advice mm -hmm. so i think that not just mongolian mm -hmm. Uh, all the world need this kind of information, mm -hmm. this kind of advice to be happy, to live mm -hmm. happily, to mm -hmm. be able to find the right person or, mm -hmm. you know, this kind of thing. So I want to share right. that with the world. <laughs> <laughs>
spirit getting in and you see <laughs> for some people <laughs> okay. we are talking nonsense okay. you know that right yeah, yeah sorry <laughs> some audiences uh -huh. okay why you believe uh, in spirits coming in no your body and uh, start singing i don't believe i know so ah, okay. I, I, I will tell it differently okay let's say that having the intuition at the 100 person level so it means that I, when this happened, this state happened, I don't need to think. The it's just going, it's just flowing like naturally, mm -hmm. and it's it it works for any kind of person, mm -hmm. in any kind of field. Like some some person who who's making bread, mm -hmm. at some point, mm -hmm. it's just magical. It just use the flour, the water, then everything, and the the bread gonna be so delicious. And the guy or the the woman doesn't even know. Uh, how they did it, it's just uh -huh. like, uh -huh. just yeah. like that, you yeah. know, like uh -huh. pure intuition, pure feeling. So that's no kind brain, of like... No brain, no intellect yeah. is needed anymore. That's like, I take my brain, I put it on the table, just heart. And then mm -hmm. it's like giving like that. So you are jumping from uh, Epic, jumping around. Mm -hmm. How does it work? Do you, do you plan it? Or, okay, when I get this better at Marunghor, I will start learning the long song mm -hmm. or i mean you even tried acting just yeah. recently uh -huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah tell us about the movie experience uh -huh. yeah. well the you movie tried acting. the movie experience was super super interesting uh -huh. uh, as that's my that's my major usually i'm from the other side yes. of the camera mm -hmm. so now i was like in front of the camera mm -hmm. so that was super super interesting mm -hmm. uh, i really really enjoyed it a lot mm -hmm. uh, of course the difficult part was mm -hmm. the language mm -hmm. because I'm not Mongolian and mm -hmm. when we shoot the movie mm -hmm. uh, my Mongolian language was not that good mm -hmm. so that was very difficult but I really learned a lot of things I had like a, a horse riding lesson with like super great stuntmen uh -huh, so I was uh -huh. like I really learned a lot of stuff on, ah. on this movie uh -huh. related to the Mongolian culture and we went in amazing place like uh, uh -huh. in Mongolian countryside uh -huh. So I'm really grateful and that was like, a, I hope I can play again in other oh, movies. In other movies. Oh, you're going to be a again. big celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really, really great. And ride more horse. And ride more that, horse. That Do you so love it? Oh, yeah, that's so good. Huh? And actually, that's very interesting because riding horse and playing the horse is like so connected in yeah. so many ways, like holding the, uh -huh. the jolo. And, and all I think that. now you are getting the um, the the reasons or the, the, the spirit behind the Marunghor melodies, no? Yeah, when yeah, you st really yeah. start riding the horses, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the, the galloping or, you know, different kind of steps. The energy, nice. yeah, the energy, that's like really, really amazing. Yeah, yeah, and everything is interconnected, so that okay. was really great. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look at how you do this BB game. Yeah, no. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay, he is also dancing the traditional Mongolian, one of the traditional Mongolian dances, which is called Bilge. Uh, talk about 
talk about this dance a little bit. Mm -hmm. What's the meaning behind all these moves? Uh, I'm still learning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I cannot I cannot uh, go too deeply about it mm -hmm. yet. But uh, basically, it's like one side of it is about keeping the body healthy, mm -hmm. so strong mm -hmm. and with like flexibility mm -hmm. and this thi this kind of thing. Um, another point is also to show to people the nomadic life. Mm -hmm. So like uh, making the mm, making the flower or giving the bread uh -huh. or like uh, gathering the mm, the wheat or uh -huh. all uh -huh. kind of nomadic movement action uh -huh. uh, work so it's kind of showing mm -hmm. all that and of course there is um, because each um, folk folk tribe have their own style yes it's also showing like the the tribe uh, personality let me ask you about your future mm -hmm. how do you see your future uh, for the future I have no idea I don't really plan the future okay uh, I just take the things uh, as they come mm -hmm. so um, of course I have I have some purpose some things I, I want to achieve mm -hmm. basically spread the culture mm -hmm. spread the Mongolian culture the ancestral culture mm -hmm. like uh, the, this Bilge this Tej, uh, the Manuhur with heart like with all this energy package mm -hmm. that is around, not just mm -hmm. playing mm -hmm. like like a robot. Mm -hmm. That's one one thing. And the other the other point I want to achieve is to spread that culture and use that culture to bring people in a higher uh, energy level, kind of because with this culture I think that it can touch the soul of anyone, mm -hmm. um, and it can really help people to. To get close to enlightenment? Yeah, something, that, yeah, exactly. Go My on. last question, traditional question, do mm -hmm. you love Mongolia? <laughs> what a funny question. <laughs> <laughs> do you love Mongolia? Yeah, of course I love Mongolia, I love the culture. Okay, tell me specific three things mm, that you love about okay. Mongolia. I love the, the um, sheep tail a lot. You eat sheep tail? <laughs> yeah, of course. You do? <laughs> yeah, that's so good. <laughs> wow, I haven't seen yeah. one foreign person. Well, I mean, to say foreign person. Uh -huh. But uh, I haven't seen one Westerner to eat sheep tail. I love okay, it so Okay, sheep much. tail, that's yeah, very yeah. interesting. The, um, as, as I'm a French, of course, food comes first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and of course, like the Marunhor is, is, okay, is Marunhor. totally the love of my life. So, And the third... Mm, I would say the land energy, the land philosophy, like the culture from the countryside, like um, nomadic philosophy. Yeah, no I, I mean the land itself is land alive. Itself. You know, it's like uh, when I go in the countryside, I can really feel the the land talking to me or being very alive, and there is an exchange between the nature and the people, mm -hmm. and also seeing that with like the Mongolian nomads. For them, it's just like normal. It's, it's you know. always there. So like just just before I said, the spirit comes in. Uh -huh. For them, this communication is very natural, mm -hmm. and seeing that is like totally priceless. So, so you love the uh, like you you love the land mm -hmm. connection. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, and thank you uh, for having me. I wish you good health and good luck for your future endeavors. Thanks a lot. Well, this is all for today. We have been talking with Mr. Steve Morell, the Mongolist, and I hope you thoroughly enjoyed our talk show. See you with the next episode.